What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. Check it out. We're in the battle stations. I got the cabinets running and all that. It's been a super busy week. I keep getting orders in and I love it. But on this one today, we're going to be looking at the Touch Edition. We got another Touch Edition going out. Let's take a closer look and details on this. Touch. Hey, touch. Now I'm getting a lot of questions. I do get a lot of emails in regards to the touch edition stuff. So I'm more than happy to answer any questions. The biggest kind of challenge is really trying to find affordable PCs. Again, I always use all in one touchscreen PC. So basically right here, this is the computer. This is the entire computer in my hands, minus the keyboard and the mouse. So everything is built into the screen. So you'll see if you ever are looking for research, on a PC, it's called an all-in-one PC or an AIO PC. And the biggest thing that you want is a touchscreen. Now, a lot of people have seen my original touchscreen, the first one that I ever built for me personally, and I did make notes about it that I was using kind of old gen. This right here is old gen, but it works. I gotta stress that, it does work. Um, this is basically your Dell Optiplex touchscreen, if you know what I mean. Again, when I compare like arcade builds and PC builds, I basically compare it to current gen stuff versus old gen stuff, or what I call it is Dell Optiplexes. Again, it does the job, it is old hardware. For example, this right here is an HP Elite One Gen 1. So this, I believe this computer is really about seven or eight years old. Um, it is refurbished, meaning whoever I bought it from, they fix these things, they clean them up, they make them look pretty good and new, and then they ship them out refurbished. So this is a refurbished, HP Elite One 800 Gen 1. Biggest thing when it comes to these PC builds is specs. Specs is everything. This specific one right here is running an i5, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. There's no graphics card in this, but those are the three main numbers that I personally look for. I always really try to look for 16 gigs of RAM, but this specific one has 8 gigs, and honestly, it, it, plays, it plays well. Most of the time, you'll see some hiccups as far as pinball. When it comes to pinball FX, sometimes you might see a slight ball stutter. Now, I'll, I'll do live footage because I am getting a lot of questions on these things. So you might see some ball stutter. Started. You might see some ball stutter as far as pinball, and then sometimes blue stacks will kind of give you a warning, like, "Hey, we're noticing that your PC isn't really up to par. You might have to play around with resolution and effects and speeds and 4AA, whatever it is." But on this specific build right here, I didn't get any hiccups at all from BlueStacks. So now real quick, the biggest other question that I do get is that people are kind of looking at, hey Vic, how long does it take to boot and all that? So yeah, keep in mind, this is a Gen 1. This is honestly the exact same PC that I had originally when I built mine. This one actually has a kind of nice little webcam, so you could use this for Zoom and all that. This type of PC that you get, and any PC you, you want to get, the software on this isn't that bad, I meaning you could use this as a daily PC. The only big thing, again, is what I've said in the past is that you do need Windows 1909. On this build, I did that. This came with Windows 202H, and then I wipe it, and then I put the 1909, and then I do a couple of things within Windows to block updates, to block the uh, Windows Defender, and I disable Cortana. This way it does, the speed on this is much better once you start disabling stuff. Windows is notorious for adding bloatware, and again, Cortana was a big deal that it ate up a bunch of um, RAM, and it ate up your it ate up RAM in your, your CPU and slowed it down. Especially when it comes to antivirus, that stuff will destroy computers, meaning it just runs so slow. So once you kind of know how to get into the back end and wipe it all out so it doesn't activate, you do get a good PC. But the big question I usually do get when it comes to these builds is some people do want to see actually how does the PC start? Like how long does it take to boot and all that? So I'm gonna do a restart. We're gonna count it now. We'll do a timer now because essentially the PC is restarting, and we're gonna show. Um, we're gonna see how long it takes. So we'll start the clock there. Usually, once you press the side button here, the HP will start. And the big thing again, this is running an SSD, 512 gig SSD. SSD drives they boot very fast. And the big thing is that we're running the front end called STFE. It will boot into the STFE front end in about maybe 10 seconds. I have it all set up in the start folder. It'll boot up, just kind of like how a Megatouch boots up. You plug it in and boom, there you go. 
Now it's pretty cool once you're inside the front end, you do have your little categories tab. So slot machines, big fish, pop cap, PC games. I added one or two. Um, I'll go in depth as far as PC games. You got your pinball FX two and three, and then you do have your blue stack. So those are the main components on this. Again, I'm gonna go into a whole little story about what happened, why it took so long and all that. So again, this does have slot machines, Big Fish, which to me, Big Fish is retro style again growing up. There was a couple of games by a company called Pop Cap and Big Fish. Uh, usually when you think of Pop Cap, you think of like uh, Zuma, or you think of like Chains or Super Bounce Out. Um, retro games, like me personally, I probably heard of Pop Cap maybe when I was like in high school. It was one of those games that you could basically download the free trial and then after like a week, you would have to pay for it or it's only an hour worth of play time and all that. So some people don't really know what that means when it comes to PopCap or Big Fish. You could do a Google search, you could definitely see it. The most common one, for example, on PopCap is Bejeweled. A lot of people know that because now it's like an app or Boggle and all that. And then again, you got Pinball FX and Bluestack. So Bluestack again is your Android emulation. I'm gonna show you, like I just downloaded Wheel of Fortune. You saw it in the promo video. Little stuff like that, it's pretty cool. And it's, it does work with the Google Play Store. You could also log in as yourself on Google Play Store if you have legit bought games and you could bring it into Bluestacks and play them. So it's pretty cool. Me personally, I do send these out with kind of a fake Gmail account that I make for Bluestacks. So it doesn't interfere with your account. Not to mention, I don't want your password. So you could kind of always just go in, log into yourself and then have your games work with your account. Okay, so I have the PC totally off right now. It's turned off. I had a run while I was talking. I got a Facebook message. Uh, somebody was selling an ultimate handheld and I'm, I went to go buy it because I have a customer for one. So if you don't know what I mean, check my videos. I can't say the real name of it, but I had to go get an ultimate handheld. I now came back. I had the PC off. I would rather do an official timer now. I'll do a countdown. We'll turn this thing back on and then we will see why. I'll explain why it took so long for this to get done. So three, two, one. So while it's booting up, the biggest question I do get, a lot of customers, they say, Vic, how much, how much, how much? I will never say pricing on videos and I won't write it on my website because stuff happens, stuff changes, especially now in this day and age with inflation and all that, everything is changing drastically. So basically what happens is when you email me, I give you two options. We could go this route, which is the cheapest option, which is us using refurbished hardware, whether it's a year old, six years old, refurbished tech. And as you can see, it fully booted and all that. The other option is to get current gen stuff. Like if you go to Best Buy and go and get an all-in-one PC, obviously those newer PCs are more expensive. So there's two different routes you can go ahead and take. I personally like the current gen stuff because of the current gen hardware. Sometimes you get PCs with graphics cards in it and all that. But in all honesty, for this kind of setup with touchscreen stuff, it is not like an arcade build if you're gonna play Tekken 7. You know, you need a good PC, you need a good graphics card and all that. This is a little bit different. I always do stress though that when you are using refurbished parts, you might experience some slowdown. For example, in this specific build here, the only thing that I noticed, but this is just me being nitpicky, while playing virtual pinball, pinball FX, you might see some stutter with the pinball. I'm talking some, it's not, it's not game breaking, it's like, oh crap, I junk it, I don't want it. It's just more about me when I'm used to you know, playing my pinball machine and I'm seeing it here, I notice the ball stutter. It also depends on what PC I get. Um, you know, I've done another one of these and the PC was really slow. It was really because it was four gigs of RAM and I said, you know what, oh, that was my dad's PC. I had to basically update the RAM. I was like, let me get new RAM because four gigs to 16 gigs is a drastic change and it makes the processing better. You also might see a little bit of a slowdown when it comes to blue stacks. Again, with my dad's PC, when I press blue stacks, it would give me a warning like, hey, your PC is slow. You might experience some performance issues and all that. So just keep that in mind. So now this customer messaged me and goes, hey Vic, I want the touch edition. What are your pricing options? I gave him both options and I sent him two PC links. I sent him one link from Micro Center that I found it was a current gen all-in-one. It was very sleek looking. It looked beautiful. It was, it was just bezel list. It was gorgeous. But it was about 1200 bucks. I then sent him an eBay refurbished PC. Even though it's refurbished, it's still a little bit pricey. And again, right now, if you go to eBay and you look up all-in-ones, they're still pricey. The PC I originally was going to get was about like 750 bucks. 
That's a refurbished, and it was about what? Maybe a five-year-old PC. So it's, the right now it's, it's insane. The PC market is insane right now. So I found that one, it had great specs. I'm actually gonna show you it right now. I'm gonna tell you the specs on it. It was an HP Elite One 800 Gen 2. This is a Gen 1. The one I originally was gonna buy is a Gen 2. It actually was silver, it had silver edgings and all that. It looked nice. It had an i5, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gig SSD. Beautiful numbers. All that, awesome. I basically purchased it on eBay. The seller took about three days just to ship it out. So I waited three days, then I got notification of a shipping label that was created. I didn't get the PC till about a week later. Got it, I was so excited, I texted the customer, I said, I got it, Brian, I got it, bro, let's, let's you know, get ready, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it quick, because we already waited. I opened it up, I put it on my desk, and I am just disappointed as hell. I'll flash a couple pictures as I talk. It was, uh, I couldn't sell it, there's no way. I said to myself, I was like, I know my value, I'm not gonna sell this. The bottom had a speaker panel that looked like it was held by like double-edged tape, or somebody like was, Somebody opened it and just bent the hell out of it with a screwdriver. It didn't look good. Again, I'll show you pictures. The side of it was popping out. It, it looked god awful. And the biggest thing that, was, that drove me nuts until I realized it after I made the dispute with eBay, when the PC was off, it was a black screen. So powered on, but black screen. In the middle of the screen, it looked like burning, but it looked like somebody's boot. It looked like a boot imprint was on the screen. I was like, I can't do it. I'm telling you, I, I, I looked at it and I went right on eBay and I, I asked for a refund. I was like, I messaged the seller, I was like, dude, I can't sell this. I resell this stuff. There's no way that I'm gonna tarnish what like I'm made of. Like I don't want I don't want to look like like crap. And for me, I put my myself in my customer's shoes. If I would have received that PC, I would have been pissed. I would have been like, yo, give me my money back. Like, what the So luckily the seller refunded it back. Not only was the issue with the whole cosmetic thing. But when I turned it on, I realized that it was not a touch screen PC. And it was my fault, but it's also the seller's fault. It didn't state that it was not a touch screen PC, and it did not state that it was a touch screen PC. So based on what I'm trying to get at, if you are looking at getting an all-in-one PC, take the extra step and you know send a message to the seller and say, hey, is this a touch screen PC? It wasn't. It was the first time ever that I've ever seen an Elite One 800 that was not touchscreen. I, I, it blew my mind. I thought I had, I was missing a driver or something. I was like, until I flipped it over and on the back where the serial number is, it said non-touch. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. I need a touchscreen PC. So luckily the seller refunded me my money back. I sent it right back. Once I even put the dispute in, I was already looking for another PC. And then I came across this one here. This one, I was a little bit more at ease because this one came from Newegg. This one is now an HP Elite One 800 Gen 1. So it's a little bit older compared to what I originally was gonna buy. And this one has eight gigs of RAM. It is an i5 and 512 gigabyte SSD. We have a lower spec PC, a little bit older, and it was $100 less. So I messaged the, the customer, I said, hey dude, I found the PC, it looks like the exact one that I personally did on my personal build the first time. And we saved the 100 bucks, so I removed the 100 bucks from the customer's pocket because if I save, you save. That's how I work. So we were all excited, I placed the order. Once I realized it was Newegg refurbished, I was like, oh, this is gonna be golden. And sure enough, Newegg, Newegg boxed it beautifully. I mean, it, they use like bubble wrap that I ain't never seen. This was on like the edge of the monitor. It was beautiful. I was so happy to get it. Once I got it in my hand, I messaged a customer. I said, dude, this all checks out. Get ready. This I literally took about maybe two days just to get set up. I didn't, I, I stopped everything I was doing and I focused on this. And as you can see, it's pretty solid. It's great. It works, touchscreen. It's a beautiful thing. And I hope the customer enjoys it. Now, another thing you might want to keep your eye on when you are looking at all-in-one PCs, try to find a PC that has Wi-Fi enabled. This one does have Wi-Fi. For the generation and how old it is, it did have Wi-Fi built in. If it doesn't, I usually get like the Amazon uh, antennas. It's like 15 bucks. I always like to have these Wi-Fi enabled. Another thing that I always do is that I do get wireless keyboard and mouse. This is exactly what it looks like. 
This is what the customer is getting, the PC, and this is all you need to enjoy touchscreen gaming. I do like everything wireless, so again, I did buy wireless keyboard and mouse, and you do need a keyboard and mouse. Although, I would say about 90% of it is totally touch. Some games, such as slot machines, you might have to type your name in. Um, I was playing like Monopoly, and for you to like exit, you had to use the mouse, so some games you do need a mouse and keyboard, and it's always good to have a mouse and keyboard handy. This one specifically, Newegg sent me like this wired keyboard and this wired mouse and like, no. Like, no, that's, we can't do wires for this. It has to look good. So again, it almost looks like a Mega Touch. It's just clean looking. That's what's great about it. And I treat it in a way, as you can see, when we turned it on, it turns on, it boots. If you want to turn it off, you can just hit the switch and turn off. That's it. Nice little pocket switch here. It's beautiful, easy, and simple. Another cool thing with this PC is that if the customer wants, it doesn't have to be dedicated for just touchscreen games. You could do your regular, I don't know, work. You wanna use Microsoft Word on this? You wanna send emails? You could do that. That's what's great about this. It's, it's good. Touchscreen is not like arcade where, you know, you might have, you might, Defender might activate and delete something. This is different. There's not much like cracked stuff on this. So it's pretty solid. All right, so I'm gonna take you guys a little bit closer. We're gonna take a look at the whole build and everything. I do wanna do kind of like a straight shot, no cut, just to show you when you might need the keyboard and mouse and how the system, you know. All right, so I'm gonna take you guys a little bit closer. We're gonna take a look at the whole build and everything. I do wanna do kind of like a straight shot, no cut, just to show you when you might need the keyboard and mouse and how the system, you know, reacts and all that. Now again, the biggest thing, I do have slots, Big Fish, PopCat, the PC games. It's a, it's a handful, it's about 15 games. I find games that are basically, they're called point and click games. Even though, I mean, uh, hypothetically, that should just be the mouse, so the touchscreen should work. But there are still some point and click PC games that might need the keyboard and mouse, which again, you will need a keyboard and mouse, and I always will give you a wireless keyboard and mouse with the build. Uh, even when it comes to Bluestack, some apps, you might have to put your name into it and all that. Now this, a lot of people ask me, this is running STFE, Simple Touch Front End. I created the overlay for this. They do have a couple of overlays. I created my own custom graphic. I took basically an overlay that had 10 configurations or 10 options or 10 categories, and then I made my own. That's, that's what I did. Simple Touch Front End, you could download it anywhere. Uh, you could even download it on Arcade Punks. There is a guy by the name of Aladdin. So there is Aladdin Itbox Emulation. I don't have a bot simulation on my builds. Ever since Carlos's little thing that we've discovered with 1909, I removed it. So you're talking months ago, even before the Dubai build, the Dubai build did not have a box emulation. I just, I, I don't deal with it. Honestly, the trivia games on it was kind of old school. It was kind of like British style. I, I wasn't a fan of it. Only a couple of card games were good to play, but I just removed it entirely. Only because again, some of the games didn't launch and for me, this one specifically, I tested each and every single game and they launched. There was a couple of pop, pop cap games that like, I had the crack, you get the full game, but like one or two games would give you like the, hey, this is a trial, after 60 minutes it's gone. I then deleted that game and I said, I don't want my customer to deal with pop-ups and all that. So there you guys have it. Again, shout out to Aladdin for the Itbox stuff. It's not on my builds, I don't, I don't use it because of my little 1909 hiccup that I'm finding. Uh, but again, shout out to him. And again, this is running simple touch front end. <clears throat> there you go. That's it. Reacts and all that. Now again, the biggest thing I do have slots, Big Fish, PopCat, the PC games. It's a, it's a handful, it's about 15 games. I find games that are basically, they're called point and click games. Even though, I mean, uh, hypothetically, that should just be the mouse, so the touch screen should work. But there are still some point and click PC games that might need the keyboard and mouse which again, you will need a keyboard or mouse and I always will give you a wireless keyboard or mouse with the build. Uh, even when it comes to Bluestack, some apps, you might have to put your name into it and all that. Now this, a lot of people ask me, this is running STFE, Simple Touch Front End. I created the overlay for this. They do have a couple of overlays. I created my own custom graphic. I took basically an overlay that had 10 configurations or 10 options or 10 categories and then I made my own. That's, that's what I did. Simple Touch front end, you could download it anywhere. Uh, you could even download it on Arcade Punks. There is a guy by the name of Aladdin. So there is Aladdin Itbox emulation. 
I don't have Ipot Simulation on my build. Ever since Carlos's little thing that we've discovered with 1909, I removed it. So you're talking months ago, even before the Dubai build, the Dubai build did not have Ipbox emulation. I just, I, I don't deal with it. Honestly, the trivia games on it was kind of old school. It was kind of like British style. I, I wasn't a fan of it. Only a couple of card games were good to play, but I just removed it entirely. Only because again, some of the games didn't launch. And for me, this one specifically, I tested each and every single game and they launched. There was a couple of pop, pop cap games that like, I had the crack, you get the full game, but like one or two games would give you like the, hey, this is a trial, after 60 minutes it's gone. I then deleted that game and I said, I don't want my customer to deal with pop-ups and all that. So there you guys have it. Again, shout out to Aladdin for the Itbox stuff. It's not on my builds, I don't, I don't use it because of my little 1909 hiccup that I'm finding. Uh, but again, shout out to him. And again, this is running simple touch front end. So just so you know, if you are interested in the Itbox emulation stuff, there is a link on Arcade Punks. There's a whole thing. That's also where I found the Simple Touch front end software. It's all on Arcade Punks. Again, if you do want to take your jab at Itbox and try to get it on, to work on your system, you can download it for free on Arcade Punks. So it's pretty cool with Simple Touch front end. It's, it's very smooth, it's very easy. It's not really intense like Hyperspin or um, Big Box. So for example, I had somebody that messaged me and said, hey Vic, do I have the jukebox on this? I do not. But you could always go to one of my tabs like pinball, as you can see, these are all empty. And you could always go and enter the EXE. It's not that difficult. Or you could put it into blue stacks if you want. Um, but again, I kind of want to do it in a way that we're going to play this without any cuts. And we're going to just see what happens, how it works and all that. So IGT slots is a really cool slot machine game system company thing, whatever you want to call it. Really cool stuff. But sometimes when you do enter these games, you might be asked to enter your name. So like as you can see here, I have to enter my name and I can't type anything. So I have to actually use the PC, uh, the keyboard. So as you can see, I put Victor, I can press play now. And now I'm able to go about and play the game. So I could press on a slot. We just did this Kodiak King. Got a nice little kind of visual. It's going to zoom in. And also now we could do some max bet. Cool. There is sometimes like you could do options. You could even zoom in on the picture. So I can't do anything right now because the animation's going. Uh, I can go back. Let's do other games real quick. I'm going to actually go to the settings wheel. You can see you do have like resolution stuff. And I could set the slot view to extra large. So that's IGT. This is specifically this game here. So if I go now to let's say paradise, the, the actual image, the slot machine might be a little bit more zoomed in than before. So I could hit the gear again. Let's go extra large. There we go. Looks a little bit cleaner. So now we could spin. I could do max bet. So as you can see so far, we just had to enter our name. And again, along the sides here, you might be able to see some gears and all that. You could change resolutions or zoom ins and all that. You can mute the audios too. Again, it all depends on the game exactly. When you're done, I could basically go home. I'm going to exit. I'm going to go home. I'm going to quit. And as you can see, when you quit, it brings you back to the front end. So it's pretty cool. Let's do another one. Let's try not to do an IGT. Let's do, I don't know. Let's try this real deal. So as you can see, real deal, I pressed it. It's small. You just got to press play here. There's no way to kind of avoid that. You have to hit that little play. And again, some slot machines, they're like, see, as you can see, I have to put my name. So I could put anything random, submit character. Cool. So we could play. Next, I could do close. So it's like we only have one slot machine lot unlocked. So you could play. And then as you go, you probably unlock more slots. I won 100 spins. It's pretty cool. The cool thing also is that there is a slot, there is a casino game that you definitely need a keyboard and mouse for to kind of navigate the casino and we might come across it. Pretty cool. I'll do one more. I didn't get anything. One more. <laughs> one more spin, one more spin. So like for example, this specific slot here, there is no gears on the side. There's no like, 
There's no exit. You have to basically press cash out and then yes. So depending again on the game, it's either a simple exit that's on the sides or like that one, for example, we had to press cash out and then exit here. Phantom, that's the company. You could tap it and then it'll go away and bring us right back. So awesome. That's what's so cool about this. This is awesome. Uh, I'm just trying to think, I know for example, like Hoyle, Hoyle Casino is definitely gonna be the one that Awesome, we're gonna do play now. So here you can see you do like tables. So this is actually kind of friendly. That's actually touch friendly. I don't need to the keyboard and mouse for this really. Probably uh, might actually need it. Let's see, so if I wanna do, let's say. Oh, cool, okay. So this actually is pretty cool. I don't really need a keyboard and mouse for this. I just threw a bunch of chips on the table. Let's see what we win. 36, none. <laughs> All that I put, none. <laughs> that sucks. And as you can see again, over here, you got the little arrow. You can press yes, and then yes on exit. And then we're back. Um, I'm definitely trying to remember which one is the one that, uh, it might be a real deal. No, we did a real deal. Let's just see, let's keep going. Slot quest maybe? I'm trying to remember which one. Let's see Spartacus, let's see what happens. There is one that like, like as you can see here, see you gotta kind of pick the resolution and all that. You just press play. Phantom. You can basically pick a, a machine. I know there's one or two that's like a casino thing. So like here for example, I have to enter the amount of money that I want to spend and enter. I have to press enter on the keyboard for that and we spin. Did I add money? Enter. There we go. Again, trying to do it in a way that you don't, I don't want to cut. You know what I mean? So as you can see there, I had to press spin like twice. I won five dollars, cool. Same thing here, cash out. It's kind of like a double click on this specific one. You might have to double tap. Some PC games you do need to double tap. So we'll do exit. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. I'm just trying to see and remember which one. Real Deal Casino, let's try how that is. Yeah, okay, perfect. So this is, that was, this is one. This is the one. I'm gonna leave the table. As you can see, like it's kind of going crazy because the mouse is here. So this one here, I'm gonna use the mouse and I could basically either look for an actual table or I believe there is a way to kind of look up a game here. Yeah, see like I could press tables at the bottom. So let's see if I can do it with a touch screen. So if I do tables and uh, we did roulette. I'm not a craps player, but if I do craps, we could roll. So cool, this is the one I was looking for. It works, as you can see, it's just when I leave the table, depending on where the mouse is, it, you might be like, what the hell is going on, Vic? What's happening? So you might have to just press table. You could even press the slots here and we'll do some hole in one. Again, enter the bank roll. I'll put $2 and I'll bet the max. Two, two, select lines. Can I bet the max? Do I have my money? I probably didn't have enough money. <laughs> there you go. So bet max. Cool. I can press menu. Even here, it looks like I could actually do the tables and all that. Makes it easy. Play some war. Again, right now you can see this. You're like, what the hell happened? It's just because you're not really in the casino right now. So I'm using the mouse to navigate. And you really can't use the touch screen because as you can see, it's just picking whatever my finger was close to. But this is the one I was looking for. This is basically where you might need the keyboard and mouse to kind of navigate. But all in all, it's fair. You just have to kind of hit that. Let's see, uh, I guess there's a race book. This is cool. I don't know race book, so 
you guys watching me are like, what the hell is he doing? I don't know how to race books, so there you go. So that's cool, you got the casino stuff. We'll take a look at the big fish stuff. Big fish is like, a lot of it's like the storytelling kind of spot, not spot the difference, but it's kind of like you're finding clues. It's more like story driven. It's kind of like a, I don't know how you want to say it. It's like a, it's a story game. So I could, I had to use the, the mouse and keyboard to enter my name. I would say a good 85% of the big fish games is like this where you're kind of conversing and then you're finding stuff. A lot of it is like, do you need help in the beginning to really understand what you're doing? So it's like, it's locked, the key must be around here somewhere. So now we're basically looking for a key. Uh, looks like I found the key. So I can now go to the office. See, it's like that, it's, it's cool. It's, it's very, it's cool. Definitely like, if you were bored, you could probably play this and enjoy it. But yeah, that's honestly most of the big fish stuff. As you can see, I could exit the game just like a regular PC game. Um, let's just try to pick, let's see like, let's try this Dynasty. Again, I tested all the games, so I literally sat down and I ran each game to make sure that there was no issues or errors and so far so good. Let's see if we could get away with not using keyboard and mouse on this. Interesting. Oh crap, I thought it was red. <laughs> ah, okay, it was red, see that? So this is almost like um, Zuma. As you can see, like when I press here, it's registering a click. So as you can see, it was red and then it turned different. So you could see there, like if I wanted to bring this red here, I have to keep my eye on the mouth. If I'm gonna put the green here, yeah, see he drops it wherever he is. So I'm gonna wait for this blue, I'm gonna put a blue here, but I really want it here. See like that, this is one that you will, you'll need, you're gonna want to use the, the keyboard and mouse for this. And he's just trading balls right now. Interesting. Yeah, no. See, like, um, if I want to take this green, I swapped it there. Yeah, this is one game that you're going to need the mouse for. As you can see, I will need the mouse to play this. Oh, again, I kind of want to do it in a way that I don't want to skip. So, as you can see, this one specific game, you do need the mouse to play this game correctly. Let's try something else. And again, you could use the mouse to navigate also. T2. Again, a majority of these are these hidden kind of artifact spot the difference kind of stuff. Not that it's a bad thing, it's it's definitely cool. It's, there is a lot of them though. Um there's a SpongeBob SquarePants bubble rush. Let's see how this reacts. It's gonna basically be the same type of game just with SpongeBob. Let's see if we could. So as you can see, every time I touch the screen, he he throws a ball. So, and as you can see, see that? So there's gonna be another one that you would need the mouse for. So if I use the mouse, I wanna drop a red here, I'm gonna drop a green here, I'm gonna drop a yellow. Yeah, so this is another one that you will need a mouse for. Not that it's a bad thing, but Again, like I said, not every single game is totally touch. The main thing was, yes, to have a touch, but some of them, you might run into that little hiccup. Um, your basics, like Angry Birds, definitely, that's touch screen all day. You don't need the mouse and keyboard for it. We'll jump into the PC side of it. I don't want the video to be too long or else I'm boring people, but I do have customers that do want to know exactly how it runs. So, let's see. Ah, oh, that's the stupid intro. <laughs> so this, I can move the camera, I grab the bird, and we fire. So this again is just like your regular app. This is the actual PC game though. This isn't running BlueStacks, this, the, this is an actual PC game with Angry Birds. So I could skip that, awesome, finish a level. Okay, we're gonna skip this, great, thank you. 
Cool. We got the birds here. We're gonna just launch. Wow, I went too high with that. <laughs> but yes, Angry Birds, good to go. So you press pause, there's a way to go to the menu. Again, you have to treat it in a way that this is a, it's a PC game, so there is a way to exit it. So I'm basically doing like double taps because it might need an actual double tap. And we're back. The new game I downloaded was like this Disco Elysium and Golden Rails. Um, but majority of the PC games is fine. I do want to show off, I did it in the preview, was Monopoly. Monopoly does take a second to load. Um, you'll be on this here for I would say a good 30 seconds. Um, for video's sake, I will speed up this now. Again, sometimes you have to give it kind of a, a couple of taps, double tap. That's only really based on these PC games. That's not a PC issue. That's not a touchscreen issue. It just depends on what game you're playing. So if I press it one time, as you can see, I got to give it kind of a double tap on it. So I was playing a game on this. I'll just do a new game. Only because the original game I was playing, I think I put like six players on it. And we were just throwing the ball for a while. Throwing the dice for a while, I should say. Cool. So this actually is continuing our game. So as you can see here, I could either press enter to roll dice or I could have tapped the word roll dice. So we'll do that real quick. Cool, I could skip. Awesome. We could buy it. So again, using right now touch screen to that. And basically on this game, I have to press like where the words are. So roll dice. We got a nine, awesome. We could skip. It's kind of cool actually, this game, like the animations for it, I'll, I won't skip the next, like, the next animation. But as you can see, I'm tapping, we're skipping. I didn't mean to do manage properties, but roll dice. And this again is a Monopoly PC game. This is an actual PC game, so we'll let the animation go. Very cool. For sale, I will buy it. Cool. So now here, I'm gonna need to press like escape on the keyboard and then I could quit and go back to the menu. And again, this game specifically, I have to do this double tap. So if I quit and then yes, we're back. It's gonna bring me back to the front end. Cool. And I said I downloaded these two games, Golden Rails. I'm pretty sure you're gonna need the mouse and keyboard for Golden Rails. It's kind of like you switching up the railroad tracks. We'll take a look real quick at Pinball. We'll launch Pinball FX3, um, just to show you like the, the little ball. Not issue, it's not an issue, but I'll just show you the ball. I'm gonna most likely zoom the camera in so you can see it exactly. Then we'll do it in a way that I'm trying not to cut. What's cool with Pinball FX, I don't need the mouse. So that's pretty awesome. We'll do a table that isn't, um, what's the word I wanna use? Graphic intense, meaning there's not much going on in the screen. So we'll run fishtails. Cool. So pinball, you could actually like put your finger down here on some tables, but this one is a launch button. So you have to actually launch it. You could even change the camera. So as you can see, I'm pressing the camera here. There's like six camera angles. There's one that will like follow the ball, such as this. This is like follow the ball close. That's like follow the ball medium, down the pipe, great. Again, this specific pinball table, it's a launch ball style, so it gives you this checkpoint, this check mark, I should say. Again, it plays great. It's, it's really not that drastic. It's just, you might see a little bit of a stutter. Not a lag, it's just a stutter. Almost like ghosting, I guess you could say. But this right now is awesome. You got your DMD, it's cool. So I'm gonna actually exit out. I do wanna show you a table that will have, um, I was doing white water in the promo. So white water, if you, you take your finger and you swipe down, it's basically you pulling the plunger. So I'm gonna just start a new game, just for the hell of it. So now this, I have to actually pull down 
See that? You can see there? It's even give you the, the hint. And you let go. Right there. Ooh, I missed it. It's definitely awesome. It's just unique. I mean, who who would have thought? And luckily I said I put them in my builds. The pinball stuff is great. Awesome. Again, it's a PC game. I basically could just go back, I could go back, exit, and it'll bring me right back to the front end. Last thing we'll do is BlueStacks. I'll launch BlueStacks real quick. Again, BlueStacks is your Android emulator. I, for some reason, I've done so much research, but it doesn't automatically go full screen, so you might just have to hit the block there. Like I was saying, if you wanna give me, I really don't like it, but I put my kind of, it's a fake Gmail account for the Google Play Store that's here. You could always get, once you get the machine, you could always just log in. You could go to Google Play Store and then log in as your own account. And you could basically play your actual game. So if you actually had, let's say, um, games within, as you can see here, the touch screen is good. It's just like, I have to hit this tiny red dot. I'm just missing it, there you go. If you wanna like log in and actually play your Mario Run or your Call of Duty, you could do that. Um, for this one, I downloaded Wheel of Fortune, which was pretty cool. A little unique. Definitely, I would I would message the, my friend Raj at, with Dubai Build to see what this looks like on a vertical. And again, this does not flip vertically. You need a special stand for that. And it was pretty cool. I did have a, I did have somebody that said, hey, Vic, is Wheel of Fortune on this? I said, no, but you could download the Android app. Wheel of Fortune, he asked really meaning like if there's a PC game to it. And uh, at least there's an app. So we can do that. And it's actually kind of cool because you could actually throw the wheel. It's, it's pretty cool. Here's the puzzle. So you could press spin or as you can see, I could actually throw this. Wow. There you go. I always go R. <laughs> it's cool. It's, it's definitely different. Again, this is an actual app. You could download this on your phone and play this. A lot of money. What is even the category? Proper name. There you go. I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's, I'll do one more spin with you guys. <laughs> so spin. That's a big one. I'll go S. Yes, indeed. Cool. So there you have it. So at the top is your is your tabs, almost like your phone, how you have tabs open. That's how it works. I did the Lego thing. You can see my video on how to get the apps that sometimes you gotta spend. Uh, it doesn't always work my route, but you do have that option. Again, you could go into the Google Play Store. It's just like your regular Play Store. You could come here, download new games. Very easy. The only big thing I did notice that when you do download a new game on BlueStacks, um, it does create a desktop app uh, icon. Not sure why, there's no real way around it. You could just delete the desktop option. So for example, I'm just gonna download Family Feud and then I'll show you what I mean by it downloads. It, it basically puts an, uh, an item on the desktop. I'm, I'm lost for words, sorry. <laughs> so again, just download Family Feud. It opens up just like your regular phone. And you do have tabs, so you can always leave Family Feud open and go back to the Play Store if you want. Easy. I'm gonna exit, actually. I'm gonna exit this, and as you can see here, Family Feud is here. I do have my uh, icons small, so if I do actually just bump them up, you can see Family Feud. You can just dump it in the recycling bin. Again, I don't know, there's no real way around it, but that's honestly it, you guys. There you guys have it, another touch edition going out. And again, once you're done, you could hit the power button on the side or you could just shut down like a normal Windows PC. Uh, we're already here, might as well press shut down. Awesome, there you go, that's it.